Yeah, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Mob ENT Pod. I feel like this is a church service because you know, you know how the preachers be like, we're not gonna be before you long. I don't think we're gonna be before you long. That's how this episode is going to go. We're gonna get straight into it, get in and out of it, just like the Nuggets got in and out 2-0 right now, going back to the Lakers crypto arena. First initial thoughts after watching the Lakers lose yet another game. Feels like LeBron's foot injury is really catching up to him at this point. That's, that's the, one of my first thoughts watching that game. You know, I think he's struggling with it. And you saw it in that stretch in the third quarter where he took a bunch of those three balls. I don't think he takes those three pointers because he's feeling himself all, all of a sudden. It feels like he can just, you know, knock it down. Or you think he became Steph Curry overnight. I, I, you know, he's a rhythm shooter, right? So if he didn't make a three to begin with and he just starts hoisting up threes, it's clear because he there's a deficiency there. He can't get to the basket. He can't push off the foot he needs to push off of to get downhill. Um, you know, I, I think he struggled with that foot injury all game and then the ankle injury at the end of the game really they hurt him too. So we can talk about that all day. LeBron's clearly hurt. Clearly he's not right, okay? He needs surgery at the end of, at the, end of the season. Maybe the first surgery he's ever had in his entire career, which is insane, or maybe the second, whatever, whatever it is. Anthony Davis is on and off play and the fact that you couldn't put together a decent offensive performance because I think a defense a decent offensive performance from Anthony Davis probably went to the game um I, I can't wrap my head around how his play has been so erratic throughout the playoffs just just this ridiculous up and down it's it's, it's tough it's tough to watch you know it's tough to watch and as especially when you're someone when you're rooting for the team you know when you're rooting for them um it's been brutal I don't know how the Lakers rationalize this moving forward I know they won't trade him because he's been the best defensive player in in, in the playoffs and in the world to this point and and that's valid but his offensive performance was on un, is unacceptable and there's no excuse for it, it this is the possession where he catches the ball in the paint in the paint in the post and he's not going in the guy's chest and trying to force the action and at least draw fouls right he drew a couple but you're not drawing nearly enough. You can you can have Jokic in a lot of trouble. You're not going at his chest. You can have Aaron Gordon in a lot of trouble. You're not going at his chest or Jeff Green, whoever they throw at you. And he doesn't do that consistently when he's not playing well. When you're when you're not playing well, get the luxury of being seven feet tall. Your shots are near the basket by default. You don't even got to take a bunch of jump shots, bro. Just get just put a shoulder in someone's chest and force the action. Even if you're just getting charges, okay, I can live with that if there's an aggression there right? It makes it easier. Now, if you're attracting double teams, there's open shots for D'Angelo Russell, there's open shots for, for Schroeder, there's open shots for Braun, right? They can take shots in rhythm because they have to double, the, the defense has to retract and, and bring two to you. So that way, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's just simple basketball, but when he's not aggressive, they're just a completely different team. And especially when Braun can't be himself. The guy was having 30 for the injury. Now he's 12, but he knows that, right? The average is no job. So uh, this, the game, the story of this game is Anthony Davis to me. I just, I, this for me, that was the final straw. Like I, they may win, they may come back and win the series. They may, they, they likely won't. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I can tell you that this game is a major indictment on him because there's no excuse for that. They didn't do it. They, they, they were guarding him one on one. By the way, they didn't double him. The, the Denver did not double Anthony Davis in that game, and he still didn't kill. I, unless I'm bugging, I didn't see him many double teams. He was a lot of one on one, and he didn't, he didn't violate. So I just don't get it. Miles, on the flip side, please talk to me about Bubble Murray. Please talk to me about Bubble Murray, because that man, he pulled a, a, date, a Jason Tatum. Struggled all three quarters. Dennis Schroeder had him in jail. And then I guess he got out of German jail and had, what, 18 in the fourth? Three after three after three. Back, back breaking shots. Uh, you might have to take that bubble off of Murray. Just say that's a, that's a God dang good baller right there. Yeah. I was about to say, I'm like, I don't think it's valid to call it Bubble Murray anymore. And I think he hates that part because every time he has a good game, it's like, oh, this reminds us of when you were in the bubble and you were balling and getting 50 on like 18 shots. And he's good. He's good. He's one of the main reasons why they're here. Like Jokic is a huge part of what they do. Like without him, they're not anywhere close, but Jamal Murray is, he's an all-star caliber, caliber uh, point guard. So he's showing it and he's a sniper. When, when he gets hot, it's always been like this. When he gets hot, 
doesn't matter who's on him, hand in his face, he'll start making in bunches. And that's what happened in the fourth quarter. Like, I was just watching him just fade away threes, not even, like, straight on. Like, he's fading away on, like, three straight threes and just all net. That's when I was like, oh, shoot, he's he's on one right now. And it kind of fed to the other players, too. Like, Michael Porter Jr. hit a couple, and I think the biggest adjustment they made was Jokic didn't sit going into the fourth quarter. I think they knew they had to get this game. So if you sit him, that kind of gives the, the Lakers an advantage to kind of boost that lead because they had the lead going into the fourth. So I think that was a big adjustment Michael Malone made, and we'll see. Going back to L.A., they definitely have some things to work on, but now you got the home crowd on your, your side. And hopefully over this next day, LeBron's got some time to recover because he's going to need it. They got to take both these games. Otherwise, I mean, going back to Denver down 3-1, it's not ideal. Hey, I'll say this before we transition too, right? Shout out to Rui. I got a stat for you. All right. Shout out to Rui. Rui, Washington, I know they watching it somewhere. Everybody's talking about the Cools and the Dinwiddie argument. Hey, screw both of them. Rui Hachimura, shout out to you. Austin Reeves, he had a pretty good game. I want to say they might have to consider putting in Tristan, Winyan, somebody, because Jared Vanderbilt is given nothing. He's given nothing. You're supposed to be 3 and D. You're not doing anything with a three-point. And the defensive side, you're not really making an impact. Tristan, he'll give you at least a couple of fouls. He'll you'll feel Tristan out there. Winyan Gabriel, he's going to hustle. You'll feel him out there. I don't feel Jared Vanderbilt in this series at all. You can start him, but then you got to cut some of the minutes, put somebody else in, give a different look because it's not, it ain't cutting it. And you know, Greg gonna give his stat. But AD, as great as you are defensively, how can LeBron and Ruby guard Jokic? You're supposed to be able to do it one on one on one. Just just throwing that out there. 38-year-old LeBron has to guard Jokic because you can't. Rui Hachimura, who is not a center, has to guard him. And they're both doing a better job than you were doing because game one, they lost because they had to double every single time because you could not do anything with Nikola Jokic in the post. Even him, he was out running him court to end of the court, end of the court, getting the rebound, going straight now. You're supposed to be more athletic. You're supposed to be faster. I don't see it this series. The throughout the first two games of the series, the Lakers are minus 41 in 59 minutes with DeAndre Russell on the court. Without uh with them on the court, I should say. Uh without DeAndre Russell on the court, they're plus 30 in 37 minutes. So Denver's played them off the court. I don't know if you can – you can't play him. You can't play him. I, I just think that's where you are in this series. You can't play D'Angelo Russell. And it sucks because I don't know that LeBron can summon being him himself up because I, in an ideal world, LeBron plays point guard. He dominates the ball. He makes all decisions. You win games. But that's just may not be where, what, what it is, right? I think Austin Reeves, and Le, Austin Reeves and LeBron have to kind of pick up the slack for, Andy, for D'Angelo Russell because this ain't working. He's, he, can't, he can't be out there. Um, and that's become painfully clear by those numbers, by the way. And you watch it. The, 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 the eye test backs up with those numbers. It does. He hasn't played well. Hey, maybe you cut his minutes, take him completely out, put a Troy Brown Jr. in just to play maybe. defense. Yeah. He can shoot. Maybe give him a look. Yeah. Beasley, maybe give him a look. Uh, like, because D'Angelo isn't cutting it. I know Beasley, he seems focused. He's not messing with Larson or nothing like that. So maybe – He'd be able to knock down a three here and there, you know. So, but that's that series. The Heat, they up 1 0. We kind of all expected it on this show because Jimmy is just that, that guy. Jimmy is just that guy, point blank, period. With Jimmy doing this, though, 
does this really just accentuate that the regular season doesn't matter? Like, you know how they talk about the, the proverbial, uh, we're going to turn the switch on? It seems like Jimmy has a switch. And it seems like, I don't know what the NBA is going to do, but to have Miami a playing team, the Lakers a playing team as part of the final four teams, and Jimmy is literally averaging like 34, like a whole 11 point difference in the playoffs. The regular season has no significance, correct? At this point? For him, well, I mean, he's just coasting at this point. Because I don't think, like you said, they just have to be good enough to make the playoffs. And this team has enough dogs on it that you get in a series with a team that has like a rookie coach like the Celtics or, you know, against the Knicks, you can take advantage of those matchups. So I think Jimmy knows that. And that's why, like, he wasn't an all-star this year, but he made all NBA. So it's like, when you look at that, it's just kind of funny that somebody who's showing you everything in the playoffs right now, like I think him and Jordan are the only two players that have multiple 35, five and five games in the playoffs. And that's like a hell of a stat right there. That means he's bringing it on both ends. So you're telling me that this guy, he's all NBA, but he can't be an all-star. All that stuff doesn't matter to Jimmy. He doesn't care about the all-star. He's a, he doesn't care about the, even the all NBA doesn't really matter. All it is is a boost in your, your piggy bank at this point. And he's got all the money he needs. So that doesn't even matter. Right now, he's just trying to win. And they were so close last year. Like they were a shot away from being in the same position last year against the same team. So I think, yeah, they, they've got a great shot to make the finals. This is unbelievable that they've made it this far as an eight seed. But then when you keep saying that they're an eight seed, I don't really look at them like your typical eight seed because this team is basically the same team they had last year as a number one seed. Nothing's really changed. They were a little banged up this year. They're missing Tyler Hero, but they're getting good production out of Gabe Vincent and Max Struess. So anything's possible with this team. And I agree. I, I, I think it's, you know, less about Miami and more about Boston's coaching deficiency, which is annoying. I hate to say the things that people are saying out there, but Missoula is um, when, when, when Tatum takes five shots down a stretch of a big playoff game in the conference finals, uh, you got to look at your coach. There's no reason. There's no good reason why Tatum shouldn't get more shots. And we had the same complaint about Jalen Brown in the last series. It was the same thing. There was just this imbalance of the in, in the way that they distributed their shots amongst their two stars. So that that same trend is carrying out, and you can't make those mistakes against a team as tough and as shit as battle tested and championship DNA all over them like Miami. You can't do that. I mean, it's, this isn't Philly. They don't have Fat Harden out there playing point guard and Joel Embiid, who's also you know a bigger dude, right, running around, you know. L- l- loofing around the floor like you don't you don't have that you don't have that you don't you have guys who are tough Jimmy Butler's gonna t- rip your throat out if you give him a chance to so that, that that's what they did that's what they did they gave him a chance and Jimmy Butler went ahead and and, and we, we know he's a killer we know he's a killer so this series is really not set up nicely for Boston because I I mean I, I think Missoula can adjust at this time I do think Boston's a more talented team on paper they are but Miami's made of tougher stuff. And I think that that ultimately could win them the series, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out. I, I do think you've got some big Jalen, Jalen Brown and really Jason Tatum games coming, but it's about their coaching staff being able to put those guys in position consistently to do that. And I don't, I don't know that they will, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I just, I just know that Missoula is coaching for his, his bat, his basketball life in in boston and it sounds crazy to say that but he is guys are getting the axe these days i guess and there's a lot of good coaches out there to be had don't think for a second they didn't want to fire Eme. they gave him they, they felt like they had no choice they felt like they had no choice and they didn't have a choice but to fire him right after what happened but don't think for a second that he's just safe right i, I don't believe that they, they have a championship window 
And if they feel like they can't get over the hump with, with Missoula, they'll find somebody who, who can get them over the hump, who they think can get them over the hump. So that, that's, why I, that's why I feel like right now. He may have two years there, but maybe. Boston's, Boston's impatient. So we'll see. Don't get knocked out now. That's all I'm going to say. With, with this too, right? So like, it makes me, for me, is like the regular season, especially the awards, kind of really don't matter. Because we, we want, we always talk about, you know, with the players, what they do in the playoffs, how many rings they got. So with that being the most important thing, like, I would think you would maybe start adding playoff awards, like, separately, because that's what matters more. They have the conference championship MVP now, which is, you know, cool or whatever. But, like, let's say, for example, in any world that Jimmy doesn't win a championship, respectfully jimmy was the most valuable player in the playoffs though yeah like that should be it should be an award in the playoffs like who was the mvp and then there's the finals mvp which is separate like who won cool but same thing with the lebron that year going against the warriors lebron 44 11 and 8 that's the mvp so i think with that it should be some type of playoff mvp something like that and you mentioned Missoula and coaching and this is the year of these teams ain't got ain't got no patience we're not playing none of them games you he's coaching for his life I think maybe especially now that they're up 2-0 Malone he might might not lose his job but he might be on the hot seat after this if they end up losing the series if they lose a two they blow a two-o lead he's gone that he's gone he can pack his bags he was trying to coach effort today that's I, I peeped that you heard that mic'd up. He was coaching effort today. That's not something you should have to coach. How do your guys? Uh, but just interesting. I think he's a he's a good coach, obviously. But if he loses blow to a lead, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Doc's got fired. Bud's been fired. Monty Williams been fired. Nick Nurse has been fired. Out of those teams, which team is the most attractive position you think to take? Raptors, Philly, Bucks, or Suns? Bucks, Bucks. I mean, Bucks I'm not taking the Philly job. Tough. Bucks is tough though, because that whole thing could just blow up in two years. Bro. You think Giannis really gonna leave them? Hey, you know that's just where I'm at with it. I take my chance with Giannis over Joel Embiid or Harden. Oh my God, Harden's gonna leave anyways. But if he comes back, I, I would I would almost feel bad for them. Seriously, that's why I'm at with Harden. Hey, it's not gonna change. It's so, not gonna be fair with Harden. Since you brought it up, right? Maury obviously chose Harton and his wanting of not having Doc there. Uh-huh. Imagine, though, that happens. You chose to fire Doc for Harton, and then Harton doesn't come back because it's not guaranteed he's coming back. Now you, have a, now you have a disgruntled star in Embiid because Embiid wanted Doc to stay. I think Embiid's days are numbered in Philly now. Darren Maury is doing a terrible, terrible job. You think you think they fired um, Doc even though Embiid wanted him to stay? Is that like you think that really happened that way? You th- or you think you think Embiid just said publicly, you know, nice things about Doc, Doc, but behind his back did some hope, you know, did some stuff, and it was like oh, I don't want him back because why would they? Why would they piss him off? Because James Harden he didn't show you any reason to be James. James Harden cannot be the re- the the person that you're going to for personnel decisions after what he's shown you. I don't. I just don't see it. I'm sorry. Why would that now? If Maury is doing that, he should be fired today. <laughs> today. That's the thing. Common sense ain't that common. Yeah, right. That man, that man loved him some hard. Yeah. He, what, what the uh, what the ratchet chick say? I protect about mines. That's that's him. When it comes to heart, that's mines right there. That that's how Maury is. That Joker has such a blind spot for heart. Somebody that is huge on analytics. You know Harton, do you do you pay attention to the analytics for game sevens with Harton? Like, how do you how are you so big on analytics and you it's not even like ignore the stats on James Harton? It's not even game sevens with him anymore, bro. It's every other playoff game, or maybe maybe like every two playoff games. He's just horrible. He's just horrible. And it's consistent. 
And in, his, in the regular season, it, his performance fluctuates the same way because he's fat and out of shape and didn't take care of his body. And now he doesn't have the same burst. His step back isn't as effective. He doesn't get downhill the same way, right? Like, it, it's it's really sad. It's really sad. Also, it's also just, it's pretty remarkable. LeBron is playing with like half a foot or whatever, and he's putting up 22, 25, 26, 27 points on high efficiency with rebounds and assists or whatever. And Harden, you know, he, I mean, he's, he's just fat, but he can't, he can't produce. He can't produce, right? He, it, it, it's not an injury anymore. It's not an injury anymore. Um, what I'll say about Harden, and, and I think this will create a little bit of uproar, maybe, is that he, he deserves everything that's happened to him right now. He deserves it. He deserves to suck. He deserves to suck. He disrespected basketball with what he did on the Nets. And I know people don't talk about it and it's weird. And I don't know why people don't talk about it because it was so blatantly clear that he just did not try. He just did not try to play. He was out there and blatantly did not try. So that way the Nets would trade him and he'd get his way. And when you disrespect basketball, you and yo, it goes around, comes around. Bro, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it don't matter what you believe in, what religion you believe, whatever you believe in. I'm sure there's, there's some kind of scripture about that somewhere, which you, whatever you're reading, right? So you reap what you sow, right? And I think when you disrespect basketball, the way he did, you earned this this bad. You earned this bad play. You earned it all. You earned the 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 coming up short in big moments. You earned the the bad reputation. You earned all that. And he's gonna try to go out there and get a big four year deal this summer. Houston's not that stupid. Trust me. They ain't giving him no crazy contract. They're not. He gonna end up in Phoenix or something like that. Watch. Go take the do. Go try to take the path of least resistance. Cause you're not a star no more. So you can go there. I say like he's not. He's not. He's not a star. He's not coming back to Philly. Like, I don't, I don't see it. And if Philly's smart and you want to keep Embiid here, you don't bring him back because it's not working. Like, it's cool. The pick and roll, that works in the regular season. But Embiid, he needs help in the playoffs. Like, he's shown that he's, he's not Jokic. He can't get it done by himself. So, like, Maxi's great. He's going to be great. I believe it. Yeah. Like, this kid is special. But with that hard money, you can use that to sign a free agent or like there's plenty of avenues you can go. Def don't go the Chris Paul route and do like a sign and trade like that. Nope. But Fred Van Vliet's gonna be, be a free agent. Like that's would, an yeah. ideal pickup right there. Yep. Battle tested, won a championship. Yeah. Right. Done things that Harden hasn't done. Right. I, I just think and even in Harvin's prime, by the way, when he was at the height of his power in the playoffs, he had the same kind of problems. He would just fold. He would just fold in the playoffs. And now it's even more amplified because this the stuff he does doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work. He still has a great floater, still has great touch around the basket. But that that step back, he doesn't get the same lateral movement, the same lateral explosion getting away from defenders as he used to. And he's just not as, as efficient shooting the ball. He just isn't on the move. He just isn't. And, and especially going downhill to the basket, he's too slow. He doesn't, he can't jump over a sheet of paper. And so guys are just blocking him. You, if, if we, if we tracked the, how many guys, if we tracked who got pinned the most this, this postseason, and for the basketball I- idiots who don't who to comment under the post, who don't know what pin means. It means when someone blocks your shot against the backboard, right. After you throw it up, a lot of y'all be talking in the comments, you guys are just idiots. I'm keeping it a stack, but he throws it all. He, 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 I think he got pinned more than any other guy this postseason. I don't think anyone else got pinned more than him. So, and I think that's I think that's fact. By the way, I don't think it's even close. Kyle Lowry with that with his BBL, he's still getting that. He's still finishing at the at the basket better. So, I, come on now. I'm just keeping it a stack now. Like it's, it's 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 over. It's over. Harden is not a star. Depending on who you are, if you're a first time head coach. I'd say the Raptors job is the most, most attractive because you'll have time. The Raptors don't have a roster or a desire to win. The Kawhi Leonard championship is good for 25 years there. They, they good. In Toronto, that's great. Philly, they haven't gotten out the second round since AI was there. So that's pressure right there. Bucks, you got Giannis. Top three player in the NBA, wherever you want to put him, he's top three. That's championship expectations. Andrew Holiday has already said, to Miles' point, 
Drew Holiday said he's considering retiring after his contract. That's done in a year. So yeah, that's a window right there. You got a small window. And then the Suns, you got KD and D-Book. Championship expectations. That's also, that's also all they have. KD, D-Book, and then just random guys from the YMCA. So I don't know, expect, I don't know how you're going to win the, the, the championship over there. I, I, I wouldn't go there. KD not made of the right stuff. And he's on the wrong age. He's on the wrong side of 30, whatever he is, 35, 36. He's on the wrong side of, 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 of the 30s. So I'm not going to go coach Kevin Durant because I, I can't trust him in the playoffs anymore. I, I can't. Um, and one would argue that you never really could because, again, gold, what he did in Golden State does not count. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what anyone says. What Kevin Durant did in Golden State was not in the slightest bit impressive. I don't care. I, I don't care. I really don't. He didn't do anything incredible, okay? If LeBron went to go play for that team, they would have won four or five in a row, okay? He won two. He got hurt one year. Fine. He would have won three. Whatever. I don't care. And then he got so soft when Draymond said, we don't even need you. Yo, how is it that I'm bugging when Draymond himself said they didn't need him to win a championship? And then they proceeded when he left to go, to go win a championship without him. They did it. Like, what? And hey. what, what? We talk about Katie, two-time finals MVP. Give me give. I, you're lucky I can't curse. Give me a break, bro. Give me a break, please. Go somewhere with that. Yo, to your point, that's what, I think that's how you say his name, Emmanuel Acho, whatever his name is. Yeah. He said that. He said, KD literally is the player that you have to question his greatness because these teams can do the same thing with or without you. Right. Brooklyn. He was like pointing out Brooklyn lost in the first round this year. When you were there, they lost in the first round. Brooklyn was a six seed when you were there. They were a fit when you were there. It was a five seed. Golden State seed one year. <laughs> Golden State. They won before you, won with you, by and won after you. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Thanks. So. And don't think that Phoenix with that with Macau Bridge and Cam Johnson couldn't have gotten further and give given Denver an even harder series than they did without you. That's the worst part. And it's not his fault. The team, well, it is his fault. The team got gutted, but you're Kevin Durant. Like you don't get that excuse, my guy. Not when you are said you you said you you said you're tired of being number two in the league where LeBron existed. You said that. So now I got to hold you to the same standard I hold LeBron to. I don't want to do it. I know you was never made for that. I know you were never going to match up to what LeBron is. I knew it, but you said you wanted that, that. You wanted that challenge. So okay, here it is. And if I hold you to that standard, you have not accomplished. You you're a great scorer. You're the greatest scorer of all time. The greatest scorer I've ever seen in my life. Most skilled scorer I've ever seen in my life. That's it. That's it. Outside of that, you need to go brush your hair and put some lotion on. Ain't nothing else you've done in your career that's really that impressive. I'm sorry, nothing, nothing. The 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 the, the, the series against the Bucks that I think it was in 2020 where he was amazing, that was a very impressive. I think I, I gained a lot of respect for him in that series. Um, but outside of that, man, I, I, I don't see it. I'm sorry. And I love it. Now this is three straight episodes. We got a KD rant, and it's going to do numbers, and y'all going to comment on it and get mad like I don't hear the same thing anyway. Y'all be feeding into it. This is so beautiful. I and you also don't listen to the whole podcast. So oh, no, hear, of course not. Like, they hear the whatever the clip is, and they respond to the clip. <laughs> And it's like, I said, all I said for the entire episode. And then it's like, hey. oh, who hurt you? This and that. Yeah, whatever. Nigga. I put it on a plate. They eat it up every time. Oh, Greg said something about KD. Oh, Greg don't know what he's talking about. Every single time. And the greatest thing is on all platforms. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. They all hate when Greg talks about KD. It's beautiful. It's numbers across all platforms. I don't, I don't get why KD gets a pass that LeBron would never get. That's all I'm saying. If you guys want to, there are, there are KD fans who believe genuinely that he is the best player he's, that they've ever seen. He's better than LeBron James. So how are you not holding him to the same standard? Y'all don't even make any sense. Like, y'all don't even make any sense, bro. If LeBron did that, are you kidding me? And then they'd be like, oh, yeah, it's, it's like when you can compare it to when you went to Miami. No, you can't, you idiot. It doesn't make any sense. Y'all, people are stupid, bro. People are so stupid. We are so screwed as a society. We are so screwed. We got we got Steven Jackson defending John Morant. We, we, got, we got we got JJ Redick making it a political thing with the John Morant thing. No, John Morant's just a, he's a dickhead. 
guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, why are you, why are you show flashing guns every chance you get? It doesn't make sense. And what is with this generation and not taking accountability for your actions? You messed up. There's no NBA star out there going around flashing guns. No one. They call Allen Iverson a thug for less. They did that. Okay. And by the way, I, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. I don't subscribe to that, that racist narrative. But he, all he did was wear a do-rag to press conferences, and they were ready to boot him out the league, man. What, like, and you flashing guns? For what? If you have it all, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? And, and somehow it's like, oh, well, guns are legal. And okay, right. fine. Guns are legal. Have a gun on you all the time. Who cares? Don't put on Instagram Live all the time. Why are you on Instagram Live? Stop going on Instagram Live, bro. Like, what are you you're telling on yourself on top of it? You not only are you stupid, you, you're, you're, you're even dumber than I thought because you're telling on yourself. And then you have adults defending you. I, I we're screwed with the society, guys. We're hey, in funny enough, the one of the people that actually had some type of common sense on it, Little Wayne, he said, I'm trying to figure out what's the reason. Like, what's <laughs> That's the papers. I know you're not talking. <laughs> but he even said, like, he's trying to figure out, like, what, what are you gaining from this? Why are you doing this? Uh, like, what is the purpose of constantly going on IG Live and doing this? And he said it to Stephen Jackson, the one that was defending him. We are not going to spend any more time on that because every time he defends or speaks up for Black people outside of the situation that happened in Minnesota, his twin, he has taken. Twin? Is that his twin? Is that his that's twin? what he called. He called him his twin. He called oh, him. oh my god! I'm going off of what Stephen said. Outside of that situation and stepping up in that regard, he takes black people back 25 years every single time. He's an idiot. I I I also want to say, you know, there's something to be said for the fact that this is not the first time he's done something stupid with it regarding a gun, guys. I mean, it isn't like it was just the Colorado incident. It was also the laser pointer. Uh, incident with with the pace of staffers pointing that outside of the window of his car and the the full yeah John Morant he, he might not deserve to be here he might not deserve to be in this moment be in this position because he's hanging out with the same dude the same dude who took that Instagram live that he recently got caught in holding a gun was in the car with him when he pointed the laser pointer at so he's keeping the same people around him. he didn't learn it's been three strikes technically you're out technically you're out bro like not because you're very talented you're going to survive this and you're going to get another chance and another chance, right? Until you can't do what you do anymore, which by the way, you won't be able to do that forever. Your, your play style is not sustainable long-term. Good luck. He's playing with fire, bro. And everybody around him is, is foolish. All right. It's foolish. And he, and he is the biggest fool of them all. Thousand percent. And that hurts Memphis big time because it's definitely at least, at least, and I'm being. He don't care about anybody but himself. At least thirty games. At least you you could see it in Adam Adam Silver's heart was Gutted. broken. Gutted. Adam Silver's heart was broken. He's I spoke to my man's. We had a long conversation, and he's doing it again. I want to make him the face of the league so bad. Yep. I'm tired of having. Oh, it's great! It's great for the league that we have players from all over the world, but we need to have an American face, and it's great. It would be an American black face, and you keep messing it up, Job. Ja. Adam Silver, like he was going to cry like that was his son. He had more emotion than T. Morant, dude. I ain't seen T. Morant come out yet and say anything like, hey, Ja, come on, man. Like, now Nike taking you off of the website and all that. Like, Shoes of fire, too. You know how hard that is to mess that up? Shoes of fire. Those shoes are going to sell like crazy. And, and they probably still would have sold. But, but for them to like take them off the website to make the point, it just tells you how much he's, how far he's fallen. And he's not smart. I heard that Draymond was saying this. He's not smart in this regard. You're you doing this is affecting how parents view you. Yep. Sneaker game is a children's game. If the parents don't rock with you in your behavior and don't want their children supporting you, they're not going to buy those sneakers regardless of how far they are. So you'll get probably people like us that can afford it. The adults that be like, I don't care, shoot them up. We'll buy your kicks, but. To sell out like Kyrie was doing, that's a kid. That's a kid's game. Mm-hmm. That's children, and John Morant is messing that up. Regardless, we gonna end off with with, with this two things. I just want to ask y'all, how do y'all see the draft? 
So Wimby is obviously going, obviously going first. Mm -hmm. He should honestly, if I'm pop and the rest of the sports organization, we're sending you leave France now. I don't want you to be over there. There's nothing else left for you over there. Come here, start learning the playbook, figure out where you want to live, get your house, all that stuff. There's not another game you're putting a French jersey on at all. Yeah. Send your butt over here. Come to San Antonio right now. Who do y'all see for the rest of the draft? That second pick, players that are sleeper picks. And let's pump the brakes down. This this Wimby, he's the best prospect like in history in all of sports. Come on. Like, let's let's chill out. Let's chill out. Because honestly, somebody that's seven foot four and above has never played a thousand games in their NBA career. So can we see him actually get on the court and actually see if he can be healthy, if he puts on weight correctly? Shoot, that Negro Chet ain't even played a game yet. He also didn't have more hype than Zion, for whatever it's worth. I don't think Zion had more hype than him. Um, and I, you know, and and the greatest prospect since LeBron comment would be fair and very true, right? You never seen nothing like this before. It's it's something different. Um, but yeah, like I'm not even gonna address this because I think it's stupid and I don't even think it's worth the point. LeBron's the greatest basketball prospect ever. I mean, come on now, what are we talking about? And if it ain't, if, if you're not gonna say it's LeBron, then okay, say it's Michael, Michael, but half of y'all weren't allowed to see it anyway. So y'all be, be lying to me. Um, but um, how the draft pans out, I'm, you know, I, I think Scoot goes to, I, I, I think to Charlotte. I don't think LaMelo stops you from drafting him. And I don't think it's because you're replacing LaMelo with Scoot. I think it's because you want to pair them up together. They have very different skill sets. I think they can play together. I think it makes sense. Uh, you take the blue chip talent that isn't a potentially a criminal. And I think that school over, <laughs> over Brandon Miller. I think Miller goes three to uh, three to uh, Portland. It, I'm serious, bro. I mean, look, I'm all serious about Brandon Miller. All right, let's stop. I'm going to stop joking. All right. He may not be a, he's not a criminal, but he's, he's, he's an idiot. And kids that age can be stupid. So that's fair. You're a kid. You make mistakes. Fine. But that's got to mean something in the draft process, right? Like, he's going to have more freedom and money than he's, than he's ever had in his entire life. No one can babysit him. There's no class. There's no study hall. So what else are you going to get yourself into when you get to the league, bro? And you're going to be in Portland or Charlotte. Ain't nothing to really do. So how do I know you're not going to go do something stupid and put yourself in another bad situation? I don't know that for sure. Super talented player, deserves to be a top three pick, will be a top three pick. Um, I think I, I see they're trying to – lower his draft stock. I saw what Giovanni, Giovanni said about him. I don't know if you guys saw that. Jonathan Giovanni said. Yeah, he's trying to tank his stock. Tank his stock. There's a team who pay, who wants him to fall, right? Um, and I think that's the goal. But I don't I don't see him going over scoop, guys. I'll I just be honest. I don't. Um, and then as far as sleeper picks, and then Miles, you take over. Um, Anthony Black, love that kid. Think he's going to be really talented. Better Josh Giddy. Think of a better Josh Giddy. Uh, he's going to get a jump shot eventually. So think of a better one more with athleticism. Think of Josh Giddy that can just rise on you whenever. All right. Um, so Anthony Black. Uh, and then I'm going to go with Keontae George. Anybody who, who trains with Tim Martin, shout out Tim Martin, the best trainer in the world. I'm buying your stock. I'm a fan of Tim, uh, Keontae George. Uh, and then the kid from Arkansas, I feel like he's pretty good. Nick Smith is going to be good too. I think he's going to be a good player. I like, I like him. I like him too. I don't, I don't think he gets enough buzz. Um, as well. And there are other guys. We could do this all day. We have to do more draft talk because there's a lot of implications with that Blazers pick and all that stuff. We not, you know, I'm, and maybe not today, but those three guys are guys I, I would pay attention to. Anthony Black, though. Anthony Black, I, I guys, we talk, I, Anthony Black is going to be him. I'm just letting y'all know. Watch his tape. A better, a better Josh Giddy though? That's would bounce. Way. Would bounce, bro. He his defense highlights to a long. Oh my god, bro! He plays D. Right, you you said the stage high for him. He's gonna be some. I mean, we, I mean, look. Am I really doing that when they say someone said if Wemby turns into KD or AD, his feel his Chris Broussard stupid. Well, he's an idiot. I don't like. I don't listen to him anymore. He's, what? He's the key He's a failure. I I saw that and I'm like, what that make sense? But Kim Olajuwon's like one of the top three centers. Of all time. Is Hakeem not top, top 10? Five, top five. Oh, my God. Like, I'm talking about top 10 all time, bro. Wait, what? <laughs> I know. He's a failure. That's the same thing they tried to do to Bron. They, 
at 18. Yeah, they, 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 him like, oh, if you're not a first ballot Hall of Famer, people are going to say you were a bust. I'm like, oh, my man, God. Can, oh. can you say something else? Miles could go, but that literally speaks to we've been having this discussion for the, like the last two weeks in the chat. Sports discourse is so disgusting right now. Everybody is trying to get the hot take, trying to get a go viral. Mm -hmm. It literally, like everybody, ESPN, Fox Sport, everybody everywhere is saying any and everything. It's like few people that are just actually speaking facts and just leaving it at that. And at some point, even those people, like JJ Reddick, was he's been speaking facts till the John Morant situation. Sports discourse is added up all-time high of disgusting Gross. yes say whatever you can to get clickbait and hey go for it you got to get paid you got to feed your family it's no integrity though because yeah, at, at one point at one at one point this wasn't the case and people were still getting fed so mm -hmm. you don't gotta watch it you don't gotta watch it also Stephen a smith is the reason why this all happened i blame him 100 percent. i think it's his fault and skip bills his fault just saying. I'm going to talk about why sports discourse is messed up. It's those two guys' fault. It's no one else's fault besides those two. I, I don't, I, that's how I feel about it. And, and then they birthed the, 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 the next generation of idiots that come up behind them that say all the stupid stuff they say. The only person I don't really engage in that is Shannon Sharp. I peep that. Shannon Sharp don't really do that. And I, and I, I can respect that. I can respect that Shannon Sharp doesn't do that. Well, for the draft talk, of course, Wemby's going number one. Like, that's a given. It's cool. Scoot thinks he can go number one, but not in this draft. Mm -hmm. Not with this prospect. Seven foot five, handles can shoot. It's not happening. Um, yeah. But like you said, I I was gonna say I do like Scoot going to Charlotte. I think it's hard for you to draft Mead when you're this bad. Yeah, you gotta draft the best player available on the board. And at the time, it's not. Brandon Miller. It could change throughout this process. They get him in the building. He kills um workout. He does well in the, the workout. So he kills no <laughs> he, he does well in the workout. He's gonna kill it all right. But number three, that's the the big yeah. thing right there. I don't think Portland makes that pick, honestly. I think he's gonna have to trade it. Yeah, I think they're gonna trade it. I think oh. they're still stuck on the Dame and trying to build around Dame and they're going to use this to make a move. Like, I didn't get a chance to say it before, but Toronto's a Drake single away from blowing this whole thing up. <laughs> like, if you look at it, Pascal's, he's, he's on his way out. Way out. I, think, I think you trade him. I think you trade OG. Fred is not re-signing. That's it. Like, you're going to have to make some moves. And what better way than to draft one of the top three or four prospects in the draft right here? I think that's the best option. Of course. Either them or I had the Bulls possibly blowing it up with getting rid of Levine for that third pick. Oh, no. I'll tell you right now. I just don't think that that, that Levine is enough of a return to, to, for, that, for that third overall. I just don't see it, bro. I'll take my chance with Brandon Miller. I'm, I'm like, and I love Zach Levine. Just don't tell knows how I feel. I, I, I would not do that if I were the Blazers. That's not going to win him a championship. You, you going to trade for a guy who don't play defense <laughs> with Dame? Dame don't play defense either. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think, I think that Blazers situation is going to play out differently. I wasn't going to talk about it because I didn't know we were going to get into it. But I'll just say I think the Blazers are going to come to their senses and make the pick, and they're going to trade Dame because it's the right thing to do for the organization. It's the right move. And that's and it's the right way to repay Damian Lillard. You cannot build around him. There's no move. Pascal Siakam doesn't win you a championship. I'm, I just don't see it, bro. I'm just being real. Like Pascal Siakam does not win you a championship if you make that trade for the third, with, the, with the third overall pick. I just don't. I don't see the move. I don't see the move that sets this up. Unless the Clippers want to blow it up, maybe you go after Paul George. I ain't trading third overall pick with Paul George. I ain't doing it. He's better at podcasting than he is playing basketball. I ain't doing it. So you trade the third for AD. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would, uh, but I don't. I don't think the Lakers do it. 
That's just I think Lakers are are gonna keep AD. I just after this little run they've the run they've made, I don't see him going anywhere. I'm just being I'm keeping it a stack. I think if they got knocked out earlier, maybe there's a better chance of that. And maybe this series, if they get swept, let's say they get swept, maybe there's a conversation to be had. They won't get swept. So I I, I yeah, I would do it. I, I to answer your question. I just don't think it'll happen. There's look, there's no move. The canvas the league. There's no move. Miles, I don't who's gonna help who's interested in helping the Blazers keep them anyways. Who? No one is. No one's interested in helping in helping them keep him. No one. So what's the move out there? You know, you ain't trading three of our paper, Joel. I don't think it's a good idea to to build around him still anyway. No. But that's what I feel like they're gonna do. I feel like they're just dumb. Like they're run by I don't want to say idiots, but the fact that they're still trying to make moves to build around Dame when it's been shown that you can't win with just Dame on this team. Like, you, you tried it with CJ. You can't be your best player. You tried it with – you got Simons, who was special. But, again, he's just a younger Dame at this point. So, time to just move on. And, like, you got good pieces, Shade and Sharp, Simons. Like, that's where you should be moving toward. But who knows? This team is in Portland – I don't know anybody who makes good decisions down there. So, well, I will say there are, there's a lot, and Dame tweeted about today. There's a lot of Blazers fans who understand this, and they understand that Bla- that Dame cannot be the best champ player on the championship team. They don't want to do this anymore. They're over this this narcotic, and they want to end this 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 relationship and trade him because it's the best thing for the franchise. I think they love Dame, but you can love Dame and be very honest about where this thing is headed. You need to move off of them. So I think that they understand that. And the fans do. They don't make the play. They don't make the decision. But I think that if the fans are loud enough, maybe the front office will hear it. Because it, it's not going to happen for him there. You're not doing, doing him any favors. You're just not. It's not going to happen, man. He, he needs to be moved. And I think, I think there are some really logical locations for him. And I think the most logical one is, is Brooklyn. I think Brooklyn is a firepower to do it. And it's not just me talking out of my – it's not just me talking out of behind. Just – the Brooklyn is the most logical location for him. You pair him up, but you you have a core with him, Mikhail, CJ, and Clax, and you trade him a, a bunch of picks, Cam Thomas, Dinwiddie, um, you just, you know, but a bunch of picks, right? And, you know, the Nets can't tank. They don't want their own picks. Their own picks. So why not give this thing another run? I, I don't see why not. Seriously. But that's a whole different – I don't want to get into this right now because this is a different podcast. But what were you about to say? <laughs> If you about to say something. I think I get what y'all saying. Um, with the scoop, it's just I think a better fit would be Brandon Miller because you need some, another scoring guard. And honestly, both of those situations is bad because Charlotte to me is just the funny enough, they are in the same distance of each other. They're the the Memphis Grizzlies of the East, super immature terribly ran remember miles bridges is coming back next next uh season mm-hmm. the shooter himself is coming back the shooter next season honestly that's how i see it but they probably do get scoot and i think if you draft scoot though scoot will be the most he'll be more, more mature than Lamelo. i think he'll have a better impact than Lamelo. Mm-hmm. Lamelo still has bad shot selection from all that we've seen Scoot looks like a, a five-year vet already. LaMelo is still some question marks, like, and he can't stay healthy. Like, Lamar, L- LaMelo is one season away again from being injured, and we got to put that label of injury prone on LaMelo. So I get it. I take Scoot, and then I move LaMelo. This two-guard situation ain't working. LaMelo, Terry, Rosier, like, blow this up. La- send LaMelo somewhere. Terry, send them out. It's not going to work with a two-guard like that. Not, not with them. I don't think it's set up for them to do that. They didn't get LaMelo vets. And he was he was young when he got there. I think he can learn how to win. His passing ability. Um, I think he can be a, a guy who, who turns into a winning player in the NBA for sure. Uh, he did a lot of winning his entire life, right? I think he can. But I think it's just a bad situation. That's what I'm saying. It's there was there cannot be your your gangbanger cannot be your 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 uh your vet. <laughs> hey, that's what like really. Once Jordan sell the team, like, just start this all over. Like, blow this thing. Blow this up. Get rid of Gordon Hayward. Get rid of – you blow it up. P.J. Washington and 
Brittany Renner, they could get back together and move, like, get into all of this, bro. Charlotte is a terrible, terrible situation. We're going to end off with this. Better career. Better career. Charles Barkley or Giannis Antetokounmpo? Uh, you got a ring. Yeah, you didn't even do that. I and mean, you got defensive player of the year. You did. I think got MVPs. So it's not pretty, but he's got the he's got a better career than Barkley. Yeah. <laughs> he don't want to say it. I don't know, bro. <laughs> I don't know, bro. I mean. I guess you got to go to Giannis. I get, you know, I, I get. Yes, this. I guess. This I mean, yeah, I, I think you, I just want to be reactionary with the Charles Barkley stuff. But he was a great player, even though he didn't win a ring. Um, yeah, but just forget about that first part I said. The last two, defensive player of the year. And yeah, he's got two MVPs. Giannis is the better player all time. I think Giannis is the better player all time. Defensive part is fair. He, he, he's, a, he's a great shot blocker. I'm very specific what I said. Even that feels like shade. I mean, it's, it's just true. He's a great help defender, shot blocker. Better career, Paul George or James Harden? James. Yeah. James, the MVP. James, I think it's just, yeah, James Harden, the MVP separates it. And the run he had, the run he had in Houston. Now, this should be interesting when I post it. Steph or Iverson, better career? <laughs> you know what he's doing, bro. Isn't it? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. Um, I think it's Steph, but Yo. I don't think Steph could do what AI did. No. No. Where he led the team to the finals and took a game from that Lakers team. I don't think he could do that by himself. I just want you to post that clip because if I said it, it's going to – watch, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say the same thing. I would have said the same thing. Steph Curry could not have led that team. It was in 2001. But what year was that? 2001 with Kevin Ollie, Eric Snow, Matumbo, right? I think well, maybe Corver was on the team. I'm not sure. I don't know if he was even there yet. They may not even had a shooter on the team. I don't think he was there. He was, yeah, right. He's not, he's not that old. Yeah, poor, yeah, you see? There you go. So he didn't have a shooter in sight. And he took that team to the finals. And I think, did he win MVP any year, Allen Iverson? He did? He won any league MVP? Look, I know Steph, Derek, Steph did too, and Steph deserved them. Um, but Steph could not have done what he, what he did. Steph, the, Allen Iverson had that six-foot flat. 5'10", really, right, without without flats on. He, for him to go out there and lead that team to a championship and carry them and drag them, is, is that is legendary stuff, stuff of legend. I don't think that Steph could have done that. I don't think he's always done. Now, I say it, it, it'll get a completely different response than when Miles says it. But Miles said the same, same that I said, look how it'll go. Well, hold on, is, is AI just John ja Morant with a flip phone? AI is smarter than John Morant. <laughs> AI is smarter than John Morant. AI might as well be Albert Einstein than John Morant. Hey, uh, the better career, better career though, better career. Uh, oh, I mean, I guess you you got to give it to Steph. You got to give it to Steph. You got to give it to Steph. You got to be fair. I think you got to give it to Steph. Steph had the better career. And if you said Steph versus Matty Johnson, have a whole different conversation. Matty Johnson had a better career than Steph Curry, in my opinion. Don't care what no one says. I agree. We got three more, and I'll get y'all out of here. Malone or Nowitzki? Nowitzki. <laughs> Not y'all both saying it in unison. <laughs> I'll take Amari Stoudemire over that guy. <laughs> Mello, Carmelo Anthony, Clay Thompson, better career. This is annoying as shit. <laughs> Yo, this is, you talking about you're going to be quick. Uh, yeah, you blow up. Yo. Uh, 
It's probably Clay. It's probably I don't know. I don't, He's I don't. the second greatest shooter of all time. Is he? The second greatest shooter of all time? Like, yeah. definitively? Over Ray? You think so? I think so. Okay. I think it's debatable. I haven't seen – I didn't see Ray drop off a cliff like Clay did. Well, Clay, Clay damn near lost his right leg. I'm going to go Carmelo. I, I don't know, man. Is it Carmelo? I think it might be Carmelo. I don't know. We can give Carmelo some love. He didn't win a ring. As a, as a Knicks fan, I want to say Melo. But – There's a case. There's a real case for it. I know he didn't win a ring, but – yeah, there is a case because if you look at it, Clay was the definitive, you know, Robin in most of the cases on that yeah. team, and Melo had to carry the load from basically the jump. Yeah, like even those Allen Iverson teams, that the West was stacked. There was mm-hmm. nothing he could really do there, and then once he went to the Knicks, you got to deal with Bron. And the Pacers were at the height of what they were doing with Paul George. So I think even Boston was still really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's tough. I, I think Melo might have a case over him. I think if you had to ask me who the better player is, I it's all time the way I kind of view him because rings ain't everything. I think that's I think that's toxic. I might better I'm career. That was the question. Better career. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who would you rather be? I, I don't know. Who would you rather be? Who's gonna get? Who got more max deals? Who 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 was entrusted to run franchises? I mean, it was Melo. Clay Clay won rings as 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 a Steph Curry, Steph Curry sidekick, and that is not a small feat. But he also had KD join his team, so he got more. And he in 2015 he benefited the same way um, Steph did from all those injuries. He's, he, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with Carmelo. I think Carmelo is a better career. I'm, I'm, I think Carmelo's a better player, like, offensively anyways. Defensively, I think there was a time where Clay was a menace. But, again, the injuries happened. So. So, hold up. Yo, Chris Paul or Tony Parker? Who had the better career? Come on, bro. Chris Paul's a better player. Chris Paul. I don't care what anyone says. Chris Paul's a better player. Tony Parker was a, like, was a key cog in a, in a machine. But it was a, Greg Popovich is a mastermind, and and Tim Duncan was what, what made it work, and then Kawhi, okay, he got to play with two got Hall of Famers back to back, and is TP TP probably a Hall of Famer? He probably will be a Hall of Famer. It's so that's fine. I'm gonna go. I'm going Chris Paul. I, I, I think you probably have to say the same thing too if you wanted to do Steve Nash against Tony Parker. It would be Steve Nash over Tony Parker. Yeah, I would do the same thing. The better player It's the better player, bro. It's the better player. End off the show with this. Better career, D Wade, Kyrie Irving. What? Why are we even? Dwayne Wade. So this is easy. We can wrap it up. I don't know, Miles. You can have a different conversation. Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade was Derek Jeter, man. That's the that's the comp. Dwayne Wade was Derek Jeter. Respect. You respect it, bro. Dwayne Wade. Are you thinking about it? I don't know what it is to think about. It ain't it? Ain't Kyrie? I said Dwayne Wade. Oh, okay. Because Kyrie practically defends himself. Kyrie is the only reason why Kyrie isn't. Taken seriously in this conversation because of himself. Kyrie is like Kyrie's John Morant in a lot of ways. There's a lot of similarities between him and John Morant. I'll just keep it a stack. They will do stupid stuff. And I'm gonna get into I'm not gonna get into a deeper conversation about this whole Kyrie and John Morant comparison, Nike. I ain't doing it. Let me just I'm just gonna tell you, you guys are all idiots. Yeah, hey, I know what I'm talking about. If you stay ready, you only gotta get ready. John Morant, he stayed ready. IG live on? Hey. Bitch, we out. Peace. <laughs>